Yo, what's good with y'all boys? It's your favorite sneaker bar Jordan, aka Vixen, back with yet another video, man. Today, I'm gonna be showing you guys the perfect dashy setup for Yeezy Supply. With this setup, I was able to hit 25 pairs of Israfils off of maybe 500 tasks. Even though that wasn't like a really hyped up, limited release, this setup still works perfectly. I've been using it for a while and I thought I'd share it with you guys. So if your setup hasn't been working or maybe you wanna try something different, you should definitely try this setup. So we're here in Dashi, I'm going to show you guys how to properly make a Yeezy Supply task. So we're going to go over here to the store, and we're going to type in Yeezy, and we're going to type in Yeezy Supply. And as you saw, the mode box disappears. So you don't actually have to select the mode for Yeezy Supply, it's already preset, so you don't have to worry about that. And we go down here to the monitor input. The monitor input, you want to use the SKU. If you don't know how to find the SKU, you want to go to the Yeezy Supply page, and we're going to use this product for example. And in the link right here, this G54850, you want to copy this, and then you want to put this in the monitor input. So as you notice, when you use Dashi for Shopify, you usually put a plus right here, just like this. For Yeast Supply, you don't do this. It will not pick up if you put the plus, so don't put it. Then we're just going to fill out the other stuff, random size, profile, and then proxy list. Your proxies are very important for Yeezy Supply. You don't have to be fast. Your proxies don't have to be fast, but they do have to be reliable. The connection shouldn't be going out mid-drop, so make sure you have reliable proxies. I recommend residential proxies because you can make multiple tasks and you can generate lots of residential proxies at a time. For proxy ratio, you should be doing probably four proxies per one task. This way, if any of your proxies get banned, at least it'll rotate out of them. So we're gonna go ahead and select our proxies and then we're gonna add the task. So as you see, we created our task. We're not gonna start this task just yet because we still have more to do. So we're gonna go over to our settings and for delays, you wanna use either 5,000 or more. Anything below 5,000 is really unnecessary because you're sitting in a queue the entire time until you get through and you don't have to be fast once you get to the checkout. So I use 5,000. Now once we set our delay, you wanna go down to the bottom left and look at the Capture Harvester. So we're gonna open this window. So now we're in the Capture Harvester and you wanna go down to the bottom left and click YouTube. Once you click YouTube, it's gonna take you to this Google page. This is where you log into your Gmails. Your Gmails are very important. This is what determines if you get to the splash page. So we're gonna go ahead and sign in. And once you're logged in, that's pretty much all you had to do. But if you don't know your V3 score, I'm gonna show you how you can find it. So we wanna go over here into the search bar and we're gonna type in V3 recapture score. And then it's gonna be the very first link that pops up. So once we click it, you see all this information pop up, but the only thing that you need to know is the score right here. And you see mine is 0 0.9. 0 0.9 is the highest capture score you could have. This is your best chance for getting through the queue. If you have 0.7, that's also fine, but anything below 0.7 most likely won't get you through the queue. If you don't know how to raise your capture scores, I have a video in the description about Kodai Essentials that I use, and that has really helped me get my capture score up, so go check that out. So once you're done with this, you can close out of Google now that you're logged in. And all we need for the user supply job is just for the capture solver to be open. I know a lot of people ask how many capture solvers you should use per task. Hunter, the dev of Dashi, has said you can either use one capture solver for every 500 tasks or you can use one capture solver for every 1000 tasks. Obviously, I don't use one capture solver for that many tasks. What I usually do is I log into multiple Gmails by going down here to the right and clicking new. Then you wanna log into the capture solver just like we did before. If you have a capture harvesting tool like Kodai Essentials or AYCD and you use a proxy in it for your Gmails, you wanna input that proxy right down here where it says instant specific proxy. And then you wanna click save. This way your IP doesn't switch and it stays constant and it keeps that score that it's been on. If your capture solver happens to get banned throughout the drop, it's gonna say something like could not connect to recapture it'll be in black lettering on the capture solver. You wanna throw a proxy in the specific proxy box. This way you'll be under a different IP from the one that just got banned. So now that we have all that, let's go back to our task manager. And now that we're in our task manager, we're gonna go ahead and just start this task. I wanna show you guys what a normal use by status looks like in Dashi. So as you see, now that we started it, 
it says that we're going to the product page we found the product and now we're waiting for stock waiting for stock just means that the product is out of stock and that dashi is waiting for it to come back in stock so it could pick it up and try to check out at the beginning of releases you usually wouldn't see this unless it sells out but just in case it does restock you could either let it run or you could stop your task if you don't know how to see the logs like this at the bottom you want to go to your settings and then click enable console this is how you see what each task is doing individually so a couple of important things to note is dashi doesn't require cookies for easy supply all the cookies are generated in an api and allocated to each user i think for the Ezra fields is around 400 cookies per person 400 cookies is more than enough you should be only using maybe one or two sometimes your task gets stuck and uses more cookies than it could handle but dashi has implemented something to where if it uses too many cookies it'll just stop that task completely so you don't end up running out mid drop also another important thing is you don't want to start your task until the product page says sale has started if you start any earlier you're not going to be able to get through you're just going to be draining your capture score for no reason so it's better to start whenever you see that if you don't know what this looks like i'll probably put a screenshot on the screen of what you should be looking out for also in dashi they do tell you when to start your task so you don't really have to worry about that so always keep your eye on the chat and make sure you know what's going on as for your profiles on easy supply you can get multiple checkouts with the same card information and the same address so you can do that but what i do is i run multiple profiles with different cards different addresses just in case that somehow i get limited or my card declines this way if Visa supplies tries to stop my card from processing or whatever i have a backup plan so that's pretty much it for my dashi setup i hope you guys learned something i hope you guys use this and i hope you cook with it i really appreciate you guys for sticking around to the end if you have any questions put them in the comment section down below and i'll try to answer as best as i can if you enjoyed this video make sure to like comment subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one